Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about a problem that you might not have considered uh, if you're growing food when it really matters. Uh, or maybe if you watch this channel you're interested in um, issues that might arrive after a SHTH scenario. Uh, SHTH, that's something horrible that happens. Huh? I coined that. You heard it here first. Um, and that issue is, is the Eastern Chipmunk, which I consider to be the worst pest in, uh, in my region. Uh, both in the barn and in the garden. Uh, but uh, along with them, I'm going to talk about other pests in my area, which include deer mice, red squirrels, uh, voles, and uh, and how to uh, get rid of them uh, and what to do with them afterwards. So these creatures, I can't tell you how many people I've, I've heard who've been frustrated by their gardening efforts uh, only to have have chipmunks uh, eat or destroy uh, all of their crops. They will eat every strawberry you ever grow before you can harvest it. They get into my raspberry patch. Um, they will, uh, I'm pretty sure it's them that have, have eaten my brassica starts that I've put out and chewed them down to little little nubs on the ground. Um, in the barn they get into chicken feed and you would think that they wouldn't eat that much because they're just a, a small creature but the problem is they uh, store food for the winter and so uh, a chipmunk will carry away many times its own body weight and food and stash it underground that's why they got those big cute cheeks because they can fill them with food this is their strategy take them underground store them get more food fill their cheeks take them underground and store them okay so that's that's the problem with chipmunks um, red squirrels uh, I forgot to mention flying squirrels these are creatures that get into the garage and the house uh, in the attic they can be quite destructive um, they're not really a, a garden pest um, but they uh, they can they can be hard on your buildings so here's what you need to do to take care of these creatures or at least this is what what I do to take care of these creatures so to start off uh, I bought me a bunch of these rat traps these are only a few dollars each uh, I picked these up at Cabela's. Um, these are super duper effective. Just using them on their own though is not the best way to use them. They, uh, <clears throat> I haven't used this model before but I'm going to give it a try as well. And um, your least effective option are these small standard Victor mouse traps. Uh, they're great in the house for getting rid of mice in the pantry. Um, not so effective outside where you're dealing with those squirrels and chipmunks. For those guys, you definitely need these bigger rat traps. What you're going to do with them is you're going to make a box trap. And this, I'm just pausing here because I think I might make this my thumbnail. You want this trap to go into this box and what you're doing is you're making a portable trap system that's protected from the elements you can use it in all seasons including the deep winter uh, not that there are chipmunks out then but you can deal with um, red squirrels and other creatures uh, this is a weasel box trap now you can look up the dimensions online if you look up a weasel box trap you'll you'll get the dimensions for how to build these uh, very straightforward they're uh, easily varied and you can build them out of almost anything. So this is some scrap rough sawn lumber. I used an old hinge. Okay, so the top opens. And I have a little piece of wire on this side. And normally I would have another eye hook or a screw here so that I can wire the top down. Now the reason you want to do that is so that uh, cats and raccoons and opossums and other creatures don't come by and lift the lid up on you, uh, you want that lid to stay closed. The hole in the front is directing the rodents inside and it is also excluding things that you don't want to catch. Okay, so this trap is number one, fantastic at catching rodents and weasels, but number two, it's also fantastic at not catching cats, songbirds, uh, and other creatures that you want to not catch. Okay, so this is a very uh, specific, relatively specific kind of a design. 
This one I just took out of the barn. Um, and if I can angle this properly, you'll see that there is a trap set and the front of it is at the end with the hole that I cut out, right? You want to have a good um, hole saw kit to cut these holes. I, uh, this one I gouged it out with a chisel. I think it's not great, uh, but you're going to cut a hole in the front and that's going to direct whatever it is that's coming in is basically has to step right on that trap plate and is going to get snapped. Now you can bait this with just about anything you want. Um, I like to reuse stuff as much as possible. So you'll see I have an old tuna can in the bottom here. Anytime you might have a, a, a tuna can that's got some tuna in it, a sardine can, uh, smoked oysters, anything like that. You just put the empty can in here, it's gonna smell great and it's gonna attract those creatures. I, I literally just saw a chipmunk run by behind the camera right now. They make me so angry. Um, Okay, so that you can use that for bait. You can put peanut butter in that can. Uh, and that'll keep the inside of your trap clean. Uh, you could put some some other some other food, whatever it is that you want to bait with, um, can go in there, and um, and then it is set. Okay, if you're worried about a raccoon reaching in there, you can push the trap further towards the back. Um, but even a raccoon's a strong creature, so if it snaps its hand in this rat trap, I, I'm pretty sure they can just pull themselves free. Um, but other critters will be caught by this. So I've been using this box trap for over a year now, and I've caught deer mice, I've caught uh, redback voles, I've caught uh, flying squirrels, red squirrels, eastern chipmunks, um, all of them either in my garden uh, or in my shed adjacent to the house. And that's really helped me keep down that, that rodent population. Okay, I'm going to put the dimensions for this uh, in the description below. But you can, you can freestyle it. I basically freestyled this. All you need to do is you need to... Um, you need to grab this. You need to set off your trap. Okay, you need to make it wide enough that your trap fits in there with a little bit of play side to side. And you need to make it tall enough so that when your trap is sitting on that bottom board, there is clearance for that wire. The, the, kill, the kill, uh, kill bar, we'll call it. Um, so when it flips over, it's not bumping up against the uh, roof of your box. Okay, so that's all there is to it. You can make it smaller or larger depending on the size of boards that you happen to have handy. Um, you can, uh, I'm sure you have old hinges lying around um, or you can buy them super cheap. Uh, old wire, a couple of used screws or whatever. They're super, super easy to make and put together. Okay, so these, these are uh, really handy and it's my intention to have uh, six of these. So one for in the chicken coop uh, nearby to the feed so that uh, critters don't get in there and help themselves to my chicken feed and um, some around my house to keep the uh, chipmunks from burrowing under my house and the squirrels from getting into my house attic and then a few of these around the garden to um, keep the rodent population low where I'm trying to grow a bunch of food even though it probably looks like I'm just growing a bunch of grass here right now. Okay, a couple things you can do with these creatures after you catch them. Um, Red squirrels uh, are edible and um, depending on where you live and depending on whether you're a licensed trap or not, you may or may not be able to sell the pelts uh, if you catch them in season. Um, there are some companies that will buy the tails for making fishing lures. Um, or with any of these creatures, you can feed them back to your chickens. Uh, there's two ways to do that that, I, that I've done. So one would be to, um, I, I'll chop them in half with an axe just to expose their yummy insides for the chickens, which will eat that. They need a, they need a protein source to build eggs. Uh, and the other way, which I think is more feed efficient, is to make a hanging maggot feeder in your chicken run. So if you throw dead animals in there, um, the flies will lay eggs in them and the maggots will build up. If you have holes in that bucket, then they all fall out and the chickens can eat them up. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, if you're trying to prevent creatures from 
accessing your chicken feed uh, or your food supplies. I mean, you can't really keep them out of the garden unless you're using a very fine mesh and it goes right to the ground or is buried in the ground. Uh, even electric fence mesh around a garden often won't keep chipmunks out because the squares are, are too large. Um, so I make sure that I store my seeds in plastic buckets that are not easily accessible. Uh, food I store in plastic buckets or in metal trash cans. And my chicken feed is stored in an old freezer, a non-functioning freezer, but it's basically rodent proof. Um, up until you take the feed out of it and then put it in your chicken uh, feeders. So a couple ways to minimize your losses uh, are to number one like trap chipmunks around your chicken coop uh, or even inside your chicken coop. This box trap you could safely set this up in your chicken coop and you're not going to catch your chickens. Okay so it's safe to use in the chicken coop. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, learn a little bit about how much chickens eat and then feed them a ration once a day. That way they eat all of their food and then there's no food left for chipmunks to steal. Okay, if you're a, a free feeder, if you just top up your feeders right till they're full, maybe you do that every three or four days and the chickens just eat when they want, then what can happen is chipmunks will just run in and steal food and run out and then they do that back and forth all day. And um, as you know, feed prices are going up and so even a single chipmunk uh, taking away pounds and pounds of your chicken feed can become quite costly. Okay, that's what I want to share with you guys. Um, check out the description below and I'll be back uh, getting into hunting season and things like that. So uh, some adventures this fall, hopefully. And I will say happy homesteading to you. Uh, hunt, fish, forage, and eat good food.